No? Okay. Yes, so good afternoon, everybody, and, and thank you for the organizers to, to, for inviting me to speak here. And I'm so sorry for not, not using Thai language, but, but uh, if you have any questions and, or, or you don't understand everything, you can, you can come by later, and uh, there's a translator who can help us to, to communicate if, if necessary. So I represent a company called Simosol. We are a Finnish uh, forest IT and uh, consulting company. And today I'll, I'll tell you a bit about our solutions for optimizing forest management and, and wood supply chains. So this is the outline of, of my presentation. So first I'll, I'll briefly uh, tell you about the typical challenges that uh, our clients are facing in the wood supply chains. And, and then I'll, I'll uh, present some of our solutions to tackle these chal challenges. And, and the last I'll, I'll uh, tell you about our, our uh, operations in Vietnam. We have just established an office, office in Vietnam, so I'll, I'll uh, briefly tell you what we have done there. Okay, but going to the challenges, I, I uh, selected these three key challenges uh, which, which uh, we see that are, are the most typical ones in, for, for many of our, our clients in countries like, like Thailand. So first is the limited uh, access to resource data. And the second one is unop unoptimal uh, forest management uh, planning and operations related to rotations or regimes or, or any other aspects. And the last, last one is uh, a more broad challenge which, which uh, can cover many aspects, but, uh, but uh, I, I call it here ineffic inefficiencies along, along the supply chains related to transport operations or, or any other operations along the supply chains. But first, uh, about the resource data. So these are some of the questions uh, our clients are, are facing. In some cases, there's basically no data at all. And, and in those cases, we have to, of course, start from, from making inventories or resource assessments using imagery or, or combine it with, with uh, field work. Or in some cases, there is some data available, but it's not, uh, the quality is, is not good enough, meaning that uh, for example, the quality of wood is not known, or, or species data, or something is missing. So we have to uh, improve the quality of the data. And, and then in some cases, uh, the current, current situation is known, and, and the quality of the data is, is OK. But then, then uh, there's no projections of, of future, meaning what is the uh, wood availab availability in the future, <coughs> and, and so on. And then challenges related to forest management planning uh, include uh, optimization of forest management. What are the best ways to achieve maximum profitability or minimize costs or ensuring that the operations are sustainable? How to optimize this? And how do my, my decisions, uh, how I treat, treat and how I operate in the forest how do they affect to the future cash flows or harvesting volumes or development of the growing stock? And uh, nowadays, of course, more and more also the carbon, carbon aspects are very relevant and we, in many cases, have to also consider, consider those. <coughs> and then other issues related to wood supply chains. Uh, more broad ones. What is what is the optimal geographical sourcing area? Where should I where should I target when I need this much wood annually? What is the optimal sourcing area, and what is the optimal logistical chain to get it from the forest to the mill? <coughs> then, how how will the wood markets develop in the future? Understanding that is is often a challenge and how to account that in, in the supply strategies of the companies. Uh, what is the optimal level of supply control ver versus uh, outsourcing of operations? How much of the operations are, are done in-house and how much is outsourced? 
and, and then the planning systems, how, how to establish systems that uh, facilitate and enable holistic planning and, and optimization of the whole supply chain from the forest to the mill. Right, so then how, how basically we at Simosol help our clients. I, I listed these, these topics uh, to show you today. So starting from, from uh, improving or developing the resource data, meaning our mapping and monitoring services, then how to improve the planning. Uh, our response is, is our IPTIM software family, which can be used uh, for, for strategic and, and uh, more operational forest planning. Then we do a lot of forest valuations, which might be relevant to some, some of the uh, people in the audience. And, and then shortly about our carbon services and, and our joint offerings with uh, Pöyry. We have uh, partnered with, with Pöyry, who is one of the uh, le leading forest and forest industry consulting companies in the world. Okay, so this is like this is the integrated scope of our services. So it covers the covers uh, the whole, uh, oh, let's say, yeah, the circle starting from uh, developing the data, meaning mapping resources to know what's where uh, presently, the present situation. Then going to planning, uh, know, knowing how the resources will develop uh, and what is the best way to utilize the resources, and then monitoring. How, how are the plans followed and whether, whether uh, the plans have to be changed or, or adapted. Okay, about our mapping and inventory services. So uh, we do both like large scale uh, forest assessments, meaning na nationwide assessment to, to very detailed single tree level inventories. This is an example of work which we did for World Bank in uh, Pakistan and Vietnam. It covered the whole countries and we mapped basically all the biomass resources in, in the countries using satellite imagery analysis and our, our uh, in-house developed uh, image processing routines. And basically this, this work was used to basically identify optimal optimal places for biomass power plants in the countries. So this was an extensive exercise with a local partner who uh, collected field data and, and we did the analysis based on, based on that. <coughs> and this is then from the other end of the accuracy level, an example from, from Finland basically where we do forest inventories and, and uh, forest management plans using single tree level data uh, which is uh, received from, from drones. Uh, so basically we don't do the imaging ourselves. We have a partner taking the images but we do all the processing and, and uh, calculation of the results. But this is highly, highly accurate data basically which is now, nowadays available using these uh, latest drone technologies. And then we, we make the actual forest management plans, uh, take the data to our system and, and compile the plans based on the individual tree level data. And this, this then describes basically, it's a bit, I don't know if you can, can see, it's a bit uh, small, the text, but this describes the uh, software family that, that we, we provide called IPTIM which uh, stands for Integrated Planning uh, for Timberland Management. So basically the, the, the uh, how do the, like this. So the solutions we provide, it covers the daily management, plan, manage, managing of the plantation data, stand registers and, and inventories, and uh, scheduling the tasks of the field crews to daily control, monitoring how the tasks are executed, tracking the activities of forest machines and transportation, and, and uh, monitoring the, if, 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 if necessary, monitoring individual logs, which is basically relevant only in, in very high value timber plantations, such as 
as as teak or something else and then uh, then going all the way from short term and me medium term optimization to to this uh, long term optimization where we look at uh, what should be done during the next decades or so how will the resources develop what is the optimal way to to uh, schedule the harvest to maximize the profits <coughs> this is the basically our let's say most used tool iptim assets which is the tool for strategic forest forest management so this is a highly customizable uh, product basically which which you, which can be used for like daily management but it has many functionalities to to uh, create these these strategic long-term uh, management plans so so you can either input your existing growth models or, or you can develop one based your based on your uh, field field inventory data so you can create growth models then you can input your regime the the operations in the forest and, and timber prices, the assortments that you want to want to produce, and then based on those you can optimize, select the objective uh, to follow. For example, maximize the net present value of the forest assets. You set the set the objective and run the model, and it gives you the optimal harvest schedule for as long as you want, basically for for example 50 years or so. So these are a few screenshots from the from the software basically this this is the regime table which you can input to the model and this is some some outputs which the which the software produces so this is uh, for example here you have harvested volume by by operation type uh, operation areas cash flows development of the grow, total growing stock so basically this is a good good tool to at the same time optimize the harvesting volumes or cash flows while while uh, ensuring that the operations are sustainable for example that the growing stock doesn't decrease over the years if you when, when you do harvests and also it has a map interface to to visualize the the plants Well, then this is this is a tool that uh, this is more of a service service that we do for clients like tactical management plans for example from one to ten years what is the optimal optimal way to uh, allocate the harvesting site if this is a meal there what is the optimal harvesting schedule considering all the possibly scattered scattered forest areas and what are the optimal routes to routes to the mill <coughs> Okay, this is another another the same same tool basically, but this is I don't know how relevant this is in in Thailand. This is something that we have done, for example, in Russia, a lot where the uh, road road network is very unde undeveloped, and and we have to at the same time consider what is the optimal way to build roads and make investments in road construction, uh, and and at the same time think of the harvesting harvesting sites so we have developed a tool which basically optimizes at the same time the the road ro routes to the harvesting sites and and schedules the harvest so this is just a uh, example of a 10 year plan plan for a company that we did in Russia showing how the harvesting sites and uh, roads basically are, are constructed and and uh, and, and uh, harvest scheduled this is a uh, example example of that right then a uh, few words about forest valuations so we have a lot of uh, clients forest companies or forest investors or, or uh, institutions investing in in forest who who we serve serve and and carry out forest valuations so this is using our in-house tools starting starting from the ba base data here so we typically we use income income approach meaning that we uh, uh, define the current current value of the forest by discounting discounting the future cash flows to to present value so we start from inventory data 
growth models, look at the market prices, costs of silvicultural operations, and, and define the appropriate uh, discount rate, and use our tools to build, uh, build the optimal wood flow and, and cash flow model. And then in Finland, where we have fairly similar context as in Thailand when it comes to the structures, structure of forest ownership, meaning that we have a lot of small-scale small, small scale forest owners. In Finland, we have developed this uh, automated tool for, for forest valuations where it's a web interface where the forest owners can, uh, can basically purchase a report showing the value of their properties. It's, uh, it's based on basically because in Finland we have this, or uh, well nowadays all the forestry data is open, open to everyone. So we have built this, this on top of the freely available forestry data. And this basically just a uh, uh, similar circle to, to, to the one I showed earlier, but this is about carbon. So nowadays we are getting more and more requests to analyze, analyze carbon stocks or, or flows in and out from the forests. So basically our services cover the whole, whole chain from mapping the, mapping the carbon resources and, and planning how to, how to manage the forests when con considering also the carbon, carbon uh, aspects. Then carbon accounting related to, for example, sustainability reporting. We do, we do uh, cal calculate carbon storages and, and flows and, and also monitor how, how the carbon, carbon uh, balances uh, develop. Well, this is an example of, of uh, analysis that we have carried out for, for large forest owners, owners uh, in, in many countries, basically. So the report we are providing typically uh, includes a description of the current carbon stock storage in the forest, including uh, trees and branches, leaves and roots. Also considering soil carbon storage, we, are, we have a tool to analyze, analyze uh, soil carbon storages. And then, also, then, then the emissions coming from the forest operations related to harvest removals, silviculture and transport operations. And uh, also uh, we account for the carbon stored in wood-based products. So what is basically what transfers from the forest to wood-based products. We can also consider that in the calculation. And, and also the substitution effect. For example, what happens if, if uh, fossil fuels are replaced with uh, wood-based bioenergy. This is just an example of, of uh, uh, outputs that, that we can deliver. Oops. This basically outlines uh, what we do nowadays with, with uh, Pöyry. Starting from this year, basically, we have a partnership with Pöyry. Pöyry and, and we combine our strengths, basically, and deliver these kind of, for example, these kind of services to, to our clients, basically. And uh, I won't go through them all, all individually, but the idea is that Pöyry, as a global, global player, has a, a huge amount of, for example, market-related data. Which, which we can basically integrate to our modern forest planning, planning systems and techno technological solutions. So, so combining the skills, we can, for example, provide sourcing strategies or, or market an analysis combined with, with this kind of optimization. And uh, yeah, that's just uh, in short. There's also a representative from Peru in the audience if, if you want to hear more about, about this and, and our joint offerings, you can, you can also talk to him. And then lastly, I'll, I'll briefly tell you what, you what we have done in Vietnam, basically. So starting, starting early this year, we have an office representation in, in Vietnam. Uh, and and uh, our wor work in Vietnam started by, by working with the government of Vietnam to whom we provided 
uh, an IT solution to manage the resource data in the country. I'll show you how it looks like basically, but it's, it's a national database covering all, all the whole country and it it's, uh, includes very detailed information of the resources going down to the level of individual uh, small-scale plantation owners. And, and besides that, we developed a, a monitoring system for, for the forest industries. I'll, I'll show you what they, how they look like. And, and now also our software, Iptimis, is used by the largest plantation managers in, in, uh, in Vietnam. We are piloting, piloting currently and it, it looks, looks good that it, it, it very well fits to the, to the context in, in Vietnam, which is also somewhat similar to, to what we have in, in Finland and in other, some other countries. And then we provide like uh, con consulting services related to sourcing and, and sustainable supply chains. So this is basically how the system looks like, the forest resource monitoring system. So it, it has basically the inventory information from the whole country and, and it, it includes basically a lot of, lot of information, basically species and, and uh, yeah, volumes owners of the plots and, and so on. So this is now basically used by the central government as well, the re, as, well as the regional offices to manage and update the resource data in Vietnam. This is also publicly available. There's a portal to access this, this data. This is just uh, zooming in closer, showing like the plot level, plot level data of the owners of the forest and, and uh, other data. Uh, then the next sl uh, slide shows the other system basically called the uh, forest industry monitoring system. This is basically also originally was developed for the, for the government only because uh, they want to monitor how the how the industries are developing. So all the, all the wood consuming in industries are required to report I can't recall, was it monthly, basically, how much they use wood and what is the production of their plants. So this system is used, used to do that, basically, that it has all the, the locations of all the, all the plants as well as the details of, of wood consumption and, and uh, the output production. And this is linked to the forest resource monitoring system, which is great in the sense that it enables many kind of uh, advanced analytics when you know the know the locations of, of the mills and you know the resource resource uh, resources combining those of course you can do a lot of different kind of feasibility analysis for example if you want to build a mill you can consider the supply and demand dynamics in, in any region basically so this this is now then we are also using this internally to, to provide services to, to companies who need this kind of information because so far the capacity of, of the local, local players has been such that, that uh, yeah, there's clearly a demand for this kind of service. And we are working with the, with the local institutions to improve the quality of the data and, and developing, supporting them to develop uh, different applications based on, based on this data. This these are a few images from, from companies we are, we are working with to, to pilot the use of, of this uh, IPTIM, IPTIM software in, in Vietnam, in the plantations in Vietnam. And here are a few key references of, of CIMOSOL basically. Unfortunately, Thailand is, is still, is not green, but we, we would be happy to, happy to support you here and, and, and to, to develop our, our operations here. But as said, we have an office in Vietnam now, now so it's, it's uh, very close by. But as you see, we are working ac across the globe, basically. This was my presentation. I'm happy to uh, yeah, answer any, any questions. And as I said, if you want to use a translator, there's a translator down, downstairs who, who has promised to help me Help me if you want to discuss. Thank you.
ครับก็ถ้าเกิดสงสัยมีล่ามนะครับมีคำถามจากฟอร์มไหมครับขอสักหนึ่งคำถามครับโอเคครับอาจารย์เชิญครับขอไม่ yes ขอถามเป็นภาษาไทยก่อนก็แล้วกันนะพวกเดียวกันจะได้รู้เรื่องก็คือว่าตัวอย่างที่เขาไปทำที่เวียดนามเนี่ยน่าสนใจก็มันจะมีอะไรนะ monitoring industry ก็อยากจะรู้ว่าพอเขาไปทำให้ที่เวียดนามแล้วเนี่ยที่ดานังเนี่ยเราอยากก็คืออยากรู้ไม่รู้เรื่องอะไรเลยว่าดานังมีต้นอะไรมากอยากให้เขาตอบด้วยว่ามันมีต้นอะไรนะคะมีมีไม้ที่เป็นไม้เศรษฐกิจอะไรเสร็จแล้วถ้าเป็นการตั้งโรงงานหลังจากใช้โปรแกรมของที่นี่แล้วเนี่ยเขาควรจะตั้งที่ตรงไหนนะคะ um, My question is that uh, you study in Da Nang right Vietnam um, please uh, let us know that which species and quality of wood that you study for monitoring uh, industry in that area from using this uh, software that you developed. Thank you. Uh, did, I, did I understand correctly that you're asking what, what species can be monitored or... Uh, I, I'm not sure if I understood the question correctly, but the species doesn't really have any, any difference in, in any of our, our services. We work with, with any, any kind of species and... and uh, Starting from boreal forest to any any plantation species, so it's it's uh, when it comes to, for example, planning aspects. If you want to create optimized plans, then of course you have to have some kind of uh, starting data to develop the growth model. For example, if you don't have one already, but but the species in, in Vietnam, it's mostly I think uh, eucalyptus in acacia, but but uh, we work with with many other other species as well, so it doesn't really have any any effect to to the to our solutions. I don't know if I responded <laughs> to your question, or was it was it what you asked? <laughs> Quality of the wood. Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, like uh, understanding the quality of wood is is typically. Well, well. First of all, we often we are not the ones who develop the data. Meaning that uh, whether it's a field inventory, whether it's satellite image inventory or drone inventory, we typically work with partners who develop the data. And then it's basically we use the data or put it into our system, but our systems as such cannot like improve the or create the data. In Vietnam, I think it was like a, the starting point is the National Forest Inventory, but now basically we are advising them how to improve the quality of the data, defining the sampling sampling schemes, how to what to measure and where to 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 improve like the more more, more local results. So. Uh, I don't know if, if this is a response to your question, but but yeah, we, we don't really create the data ourselves, but we assist our our cli clients and partners to to yeah, further improve the quality of the data. <laughs> 